was a NSFW detail about a historical figure that's normally left out of the history books. Ancient Egyptians believed the god Atom created the universe by masturbating to ejaculation, and that the ebb and flow of the Nile corresponded to how much he came. To honor this, the pharaohs ceremonially masturbated into the river. It's said that Henry VIII exploded in his coffin. Dogs then licked up the Henry Deuce. The first thing the father of microbiology, Anton van Leeuwenhoek, put under a microscope was semen. They understood that semen was integral to the creation of life but didn't yet understand their concept of single-cell organisms he fully expected to see tiny little humans in his jizz. So yeah, the first thing he did was whack off on a slide and look at it. Not hidden in his home country, but not known by the rest of the world though, is the fact that H. C. Anderson left a mark in his diary. Every time he had masturbated, sometimes with a little note on the side, with his thoughts about obsession. Little lay but worth the shot. Elizabeth Bishop and Robert Lowell, the poets, had a 30-year letter exchange where Robert, while married, swooned over Elizabeth after he initially met her, declaring his love and want to propose for her all while being married and her blatant denial and uncomfortable lesbian anguish at this fact. He threatens suicide and lots of self-harm while she's just like, ha ha let's read this book, together, and not think about romance. He was a manic cocaine freak and she was a crazy alcoholic lesbian with a toucan. She drank rubbing alcohol when denied conventional drinks. There's a great play highlighting these events called Dear Elizabeth. French President Felix Ford died while getting his dick sucked skeptical smiley face. George Washington had severe hemorrhoids, to the extent that he couldn't even ride a horse into battle sometimes, and had to be pulled on a cart. Kaiser Wilhelm II, the last German emperor wrote very sexual letters to his mum when he was a teenager. Abigail Adams apparently spent a lot of time worrying that her son John Quincy Adams would jerk off or bang whores when he left the house, and advised against doing both in several letters to him. Paul Revere would ride from Boston to Newport Re to cheat on his wife. In school I was taught that Ben Franklin had a string of pearls that were several feet long. He would add a pearl to it each time he slept with a new woman. Princess Diana and her Le Gadget, a sex toy that she carried around with her when she went on diplomatic trips. She had even shown a table of foreign officials her toy as a prank on numerous occasions. She also believed it brought her good luck. One time she forgot to bring it with her and actually asked a bodyguard to go back to the hotel to fetch it for her. The great magician Houdini once escaped a prison cell while fully nude as to not hide anything to escape. However, what the guards failed to check was that he hid a skeleton key in his ass checks. Big dicks were considered barbaric in ancient history. The Greeks especially thought that it showed men with big rock-hard full-blooded cocks were full of lust and low intelligence. This is why most of their statues today have them displaying a small dick. During Mexico's independence fight there was a lady called La Guerra Rodriguez, that means Rodriguez the Blonde. She used to spy on the Spanish monarchy generals by going to bed with them. She passed information to the independent army and had a major role on Mexico's winning the fight. After the independence was declared, the new monarch, Agustín de Iturbide, made the entire army march in front of La Guerra's house. They were lovers and she was the one that inspired him to action. She was also lover of Alexander von Humboldt and Simon Bolivar. She also escaped the Inquisition trial by showing her boobs. She is never mentioned in the traditional history books or school lessons. 
President Grover Cleveland. 49. Married Frances Folsom. 21. In the White House. He was basically her godfather and even bought her a baby bed when she was an infant. She knew him as Uncle Grover as a child and told him she wanted to marry him in the White House one day. William the Bastard's family was torn apart when his two youngest sons dumped a chamber pot on their head of his firstborn, leading to rebellions, wars, and eventually his firstborn's lifelong imprisonment. After Alois Alzheimer gave the first ever speech describing the symptoms of what would later become known as Alzheimer's disease, no one in the audience asked him any questions or made any follow-up comments. Despite the fact that this was quite literally one of the most important presentations ever given in the field of medicine, so why did no one pay it much attention? Turns out they were all much more focused on the next guy on the docket, who, allegedly, was there to talk about about compulsive masturbation. The Diary of William Byrd Second He talks about his wife being depressed so he gives her a flourish and she feels better. That's an orgasm. Greater than on April 30, 1711. He noted in his diary that although he discovered his wife in a melancholy mood, the powerful flourish he delivered filled her with great ecstasy and refreshment. He recalled, one morning during which I lay in my wife's arms while during another, his wife kept me so long in bed that I rogered her. I read once that philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau would pull his pants down and chase after women, running backwards in hopes they would spank him. It was his kink. Machiavelli once wrote a letter to a friend detailing a sexual encounter with a prostitute after which he threw up on her due to her alleged ugliness. His excuse, my last was so desperate that I went ahead and gave it to her anyway. Freud lubed cocaine. He had a friend with a morphine addiction, and he thought giving the guy cocaine would cure him. It did not. Gaius Julius Caesar was a huge player. He slept with at least one woman in every town he visited according to his soldiers. He slept with the Queen of Egypt. He slept with his rivals, Cato the Younger's sister. He also slept with a mother and her daughter, not at the same time. This was fitting as he claimed descent from Venus, the goddess of love and lust. Governor Morris wrote the language to much of the Constitution, including the preamble. He also had a wooden leg because he broke it so bad it had to be amputated. The accepted story is that his leg was caught in the reins of his horse as they got spooked. But the rumor that went around was he broke his leg jumping from a window to escape the husband of a woman he was sleeping with. In revolutionary France, a crowd surrounded his carriage because they thought he was a French aristocrat. He took his wooden leg off and pointed it at them saying he lost his leg in the pursuit of liberty. He also died from complications after using a whale bone as a catheter. Mary Shelley, the author of Frankenstein, who also popularized Gothic literature, used to meet up with her future husband, poet Percy Shelley, at the cemetery where her mother was buried. They would meet up and have angsty sex on her mother's grave BC. She was goth as hell. Moreover, Frankenstein was inspired by her fascination with reanimation, the idea of bringing something dead back to life. When she learned about this idea, she was obsessed with the idea of bringing back her baby who died days later after being born, thus sparking the idea of the monster of Frankenstein. Oscar Wilde described himself as addicted to sucking cock and said it inspired him. One of the members of the Lewis and Clark expedition was a slave named York. The tribes they came across were quite taken with him. He fathered many, many children during the trip. Leonardo da Vinci kept poems and jokes about penises.